Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. When a lot of us think about October, we think about homecoming season, but who knew October is also the beginning of the college financial aid season. In fact, the government is allocating more than $120 billion in federal financial aid for the 2020-2021 school year, which started October 1st. But not to worry, our financial expert, Janai Thornton, is here to help you and your family get as much money as you can for college because still in this country, education is not free. Oh, that wasn't in the copy. I just said that. <laughs> Hi, Janai. How are right, you? Good morning, Rashawn. Yeah, so let's, let's, we have so much to talk about, yeah. and I'm going to be referring to my cards a lot because okay. I want to ask the right questions to help our viewers today. Sure. Uh, first thing first, uh, what are the financial aid deadlines for the school year, uh, next school year? Um, you just mentioned it. So we're talking about students who are going to be returning to school or entering school for the first time in August of September of 2020 ne of, next year. Okay. of next year. The financial aid forms are out right now. Okay. They came out October 1st. Okay. So the season runs through June 30th, 2021, but the money's first come first serve. It, you want to get those forms completed right now. So a lot of people wait. A lot of people wait typically to early next year, and but you don't want to do that. So you should start right now. Literally this month you want to okay. be done. Okay. So what does FESFA stand for, because I'm lit, this is not, I didn't, I had a scholarship, so right. I didn't know anything about this. Right. So please, for folks like me, break it down, uh, what that actually means. Um, FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Okay. And so for those of us who are familiar with the Pell Grant mm -hmm. or work study, or if you want like the lower interest rate student loans, the FAFSA starts this whole process. Okay. It's the key to getting federal money. Okay, got yeah. it. All right, so we need a plethora of advice for parents and students as we navigate through that. Tell us what we need to know so that we can get the money that we need. Okay, so here are several tips. Number one, we just talked about, you have to file early. Um, number two, set a schedule. I suggest people um, this week get familiar with the forms. Mm -hmm. Next week, pull all your documentation together. The week after that, I want you to actually complete them. Okay. But if you do it step by step, it can make it a little easier. Um, if you're not sure that you're going to get aid, file the forms anyway. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, oh, it's too much work. It's not worth it. Yes, it is. Right. You won't know until you actually complete it. Um, please fill out the forms completely. You know, people, you will not get awarded aid if your forms aren't complete. Right. So definitely take your time to do that. And that could be one line missed and it could, it could determine. It can change everything. everything. Okay. Um, another thing, if you have some sort of interesting situation, a death in the family, loss of a job, you want to add a supplementary document to explain your situation. Okay. Um, those questions aren't asked on the form, but you want to tell your own story. Right. And that could help you potentially get more money. So you can do that and people don't know that they can actually do that. You can do that and another thing that people don't realize they can do you can appeal your decision huh. so it doesn't mean you just don't like what they told you but maybe you do you have a certain story to tell you're gonna do that at the school level so you're gonna contact the school and say how do I appeal tell your story submit your documents and see if that'll help okay, you okay sounds good and then the last couple of things um, be prepared for different financial aid packages you apply to 10 schools you might get 10 different awards okay and then please tell the truth don't lie on your forms see because they'll <laughs> find you out it no is question. the government it's all connected your tax return everything is connected okay so high school seniors should yes. actually uh, complete the fast for now right even if you have no idea where you're gonna go to school you haven't completed one application yet you literally need to come um, complete the fast for now and indicate the schools you think you might want to attend so that way you can get that money awarded okay. to you and what tax return do you file for the FAFSA now this is a change um, you're actually going to use your 2018 tax return okay not your not your 19 because think you haven't filed for yeah, 19 right, right. yet so use your you'll use your 2018 mm -hmm. tax return for your FAFSA Okay, yes. okay. So if parents are divorced, mm. who does what? Where does the child land? Tell us about that. This is where scenario. it gets a little complicated. Yeah, yeah. So typically the parent who is the custodial parent, okay. the parent where the child spends the majority of the time should actually be mm -hmm. completing the forms. Where it gets a little messy is if that custodial parent has remarried. That step parent's information also has to be put on the FAFSA as well. Ah, yeah, and that's why it can be a little complicated. So you got to do a lot. You have to do a lot of reading. It's a lot of reading and a lot of rewinding on this segment. Absolutely. So <laughs> Absolutely. that's why I want people step by step prepare. Yes. Don't try to get it done all at once. Right. What if your parent doesn't give you all the information that you need? 
Um, and you know, that's common. A lot of parents either think by completing the FAFSA that means that they're financially responsible or they haven't filed tax returns in years. So a lot of times they don't want to do it and that's why a student is going to have to make an appeal to the school. But typically you are not going to get the Pell Grant. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get work study if you don't get all that information. Of course you'll be eligible for loans, but that's not what most students want. Right, what if a student wants to declare independent? What are the requirements for that? You know, people want to be independent because they think they're gonna get more money, right. but you just can't want to be independent. You have to qualify. Um, here are a few things. Number one, if you're 24 or older, you're independent. If you're an orphan or foster child, a veteran, um, if you're in graduate school or a medical school or law school, mm -hmm. you're considered independent. If you're married, um, if you have a child, I had a child in college, I immediately became independent in college mm -hmm. after giving birth. Um, if you're emancipated or if you're a homeless youth. Wow. So yes, but you can't just want to be independent, you have to meet one of those criteria. Yeah, you can't just put on that sheet if you don't If have, you don't. Yeah. Absolutely. What a wealth of knowledge you are to our viewers. I'm so grateful for you and I'm so happy that you've given this information to us at this time because now is the time to file. Literally, people need to set the goal. You want to have your forms done absolutely this month. The Good. money's first come, first serve. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Janai. Yes. As always, a wealth of knowledge. Please make sure you follow her. Her page is Letitia Janai Thornton on Instagram. <laughs>